This is Kevin Brody, and thank you so much for listening to Arguments and Grievances. It's so nice of you. Oh, my goodness. Are you feeling the spirit of the season? This is going to come out in the middle of December. So if you're not listening to it in December, we were talking about whatever season you're thinking about. You know, seasons come and go. Seasons change. But some people never do. Okay, that was for four people. Anyway, thank you for listening to Arguments and Grievances. My name is Kevin Brody, and I'm so happy that you're here. If this is your first time, welcome. If this is your not first time, welcome back. Uh, if you want to do us a favor and help out the show, you can always like, review, and subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher, or go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash argue and grieve. Anyway, let's get on to the show, shall we? The debates that you're going to hear today, they were recorded just a couple weeks ago on our most recent trip to Los Angeles at the Nerd Mile nerd melt theater you know i could do another take but i'm not gonna at the nerd melt theater so thank you to all of the folks that put us up there to uh caitlin and dave ross who initially hooked us up with that gig everybody over there was awesome we got to hang out with some awesome friends it was the best time so this is the first half of those debates hosted by zach peterson you might hear me yell out during a couple of them should be pretty fun all right thanks a lot enjoy Your first debate is going to be Burt versus Ernie. Please welcome to the stage your first two debaters, Sullivan Giorgio and Will Weldon. <laughs> Going first on the side of Burt, Will Weldon. Hello. Hello, everyone. So, um... I don't think any of us saw the election of Donald Trump coming. <laughs> Pre-election, we were all living in an Ernie world. <laughs> if Hillary Clinton had been the victor that night, maybe I'd be up here conceding this battle right from the get-go. Be like, Ernie's clearly better. That's the world we live in. We live in a world of baths, of bath toys, of rubber duckies of being in bed and complaining that you're thirsty until the person you live with goes and gets you three glasses of water. <laughs> A world of watching Lena Dunham's sensual pantsuit rap videos <laughs> on YouTube. I wouldn't be able to argue with that. But unfortunately, I come before you tonight able to make a very good case for us living in a Burt America. <laughs> this is the America of Burt. Burt doesn't care about bath toys. He's got to give Brad a bath and get him into bed. Brad is his very young nephew. I did some research for this. <laughs> he was only on the show almost guaranteed before anyone in this room was alive. <laughs> He's worried about things like rent. He doesn't just stand in the boat going here, fishy, 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 until a fish jumps into the boat. He hooks the line, he puts it in the water, and he does the fucking work. <laughs> well, Ernie was like, hey, look, Adam Scott made a hilarious get out the vote video for Funny or Die. Bert was like, maybe we need more boots on the ground in Wisconsin. <laughs> Maybe Detroit needs more surrogates of color to remind people what they're voting for. Gee, Bert, you worry too much, Bert. It's the other thing. Bert's voice is way harder to do. <laughs> Bert's got a way harder voice to do. You know what that means? That means quality. You know who else has a, a hard voice to do? Homer Simpson. Beloved television character, Homer Simpson, could not be a more difficult impression. Just like Bert. Ernie, you wake up uh, a little too early, a little too late, I guarantee you, you're going to be doing a great Ernie impression for the first 15 minutes of your day. So I come before you here to make that point, that we are living in an America about Bert. You know why, Bert? Because negative people get shit done. They don't stop to smell the roses. They don't enjoy life, all right? <laughs> They go from crisis to crisis, 
barely keeping it together. But they keep it together. And they get things solved. Thank you very much. God bless everyone in this room. And God bless the United States of America. Will Weldon, everyone. On the side of Ernie, Solomon Giorgio. Yes, it is true. A Burt impersonation is difficult to do. But keep in mind, you have to spend the first 40 years of your life being a narc in order to pull off that impersonation. (laughs) Yes, Burt might have his shit together. But guess what? He will ruin your fucking party. (laughs) Every fucking time. You're out there at the coup de tay, about to scrap yourself a broccoli, dip in some ranch, and he's going to tell you every possible fucking fecal matter that could have touched that broccoli in the process of it being grown. That's not the kind of person you want to be at a party. Look. (laughs) We're assuming that Bert gets shit done. But also, let's keep in mind that Bert, probably on his own time, has an anonymous Twitter profile harassing women. (laughs) Bert might get the work done in real life, but we know what he does behind the scenes. Fuck people up. You know what? Ernie sees the joy in everything. The simplicity in life. Something that we constantly forget to do as adults. That's what we need to get back to. Because right now we're all so fucking uptight, so goddamn wound up that we forget the joys that we are missing every single day. And you know what? I bet Bert never came. Or has never helped anybody else fucking come. (laughs) You know what? Ernie has made a lot of people come. You know he's pansexual. (laughs) Hands down. He knows where the clitoris is. You know that for sure. He probably has a song. (laughs) Little clitoris, you're the one. We're going to have so much fun. It's a very hard impersonation for me to do. I cannot do Ernie's voice. I don't know why people claim that it's simple. It's not. It's very hard. But let's just be honest. Do you want to hang out with narc-ass, uptight-ass Bert? Or dope ass gonna probably give you some mushrooms on the side, Ernie. Look, if the world's gonna end, don't you wanna fucking party on the way out? Or do you wanna be an uptight little fuckwad ruining everyone's good time? In my fucking argument right now. Solomon Giorgio on the side of Bert. All right. No, on the side of Ernie. All right. All right. Uh, one. I won. All right, I made a mistake. That's fine. We can move on. On the side of Bert, one more time. Will Weldon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Zane Patterson for having me here tonight. Thank you, Zane. Very nice. Listen, this is not just about the election. You think about it, this has been coming for a long time. Do I make a lot of great points about why Bert is the great post-election Muppet? Is he a Muppet? Muppet (laughs) of our time? I do make a lot of great points. You're right. But Bert's about more than that. You know what Bert's about? Body positivity. (laughs) That guy has had the most fucked up unibrow for as long (laughs) as I have been alive. Do you remember a single moment when it seemed like Bert even considered fixing his fucked up unibrow? (laughs) That's a positive message. I bet when Bert was in theoretical Muppet High School, he had bad skin. And other kids were like, hey, you know what will help? Clearasil. You know what will help? The Jessica Simpson, Katy Perry cream you buy over the phone. (laughs) You know what will help? He's like, I'm going to stop you right there. You know what will help all of us? Just feeling good about ourselves. It's the message of Bert. Yeah, I may be a downer, but you know why I'm a downer? Because I expect more from people. Because that's what this is about. You know what joy is for? Cowards. Joy is for cowards who are like, you know what I'm going to accept? Life as it is. 
people who are fucking horrible and negative and unpleasant, it's because they want things to be better. I know. I'm the least fun person to be around in the universe. I, I gotta say, this makes this a little personal for me. My whole life growing up, I, I felt like I never had a roommate. The downer. The narc. The narc. When is Bert? Bert doesn't narc. All right? Bert doesn't need to narc because Bert ruins drugs before any police officer could get to your party. <laughs> Who needs to narc when he's like, you know what your odds of dying when you do that are? And you're like, oh, Christ. I'd rather get arrested than the bad trip this guy's going to give me. <laughs> so, if you want to go the other side of things, Bert has a good message about fashion. He wears vertical stripes. They're slimming. None of this horizontal shit that Ernie has on. It's how a moron dresses. He's already pear-shaped with his football head. Hey, Ernie. Hey, Arnold called. He wants to thank you for the inspiration for his head size. Because you've been around way longer than he has, I realize as I say that. As I start my Hey, Arnold slam, I realize you predate Hey, Arnold by several decades. I, um... See how confident I am about Bert being better. I really only prepared for the first five minutes. That's how sure of I am. Because the world needs a piece of shit right now. All right? We saw what we got. Oh, hope and pleasantry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hope. Yeah, eight years ago. Hope and change. Yeah, does anybody love being on Obamacare? Does anybody like... You know what I love? I love... I love how Obamacare combines health care and being on the phone with my cable provider for three years. What a great thing. Mm -mm. Bert wouldn't be like, hope, change, uh uh, decisions, and also change. Because yeah, the second thing was right. The change was good. Anyway, God bless all of you, and God bless the United States of America. Will Weldon. Keep that going for one more time on the side of Bernie Solomon Giorgio. Just like every white liberal male, he started his message off about body positivity, yet slams Ernie's body eventually, <laughs> doing the exact opposite of the thing he initiated. I'm used to this as a person of color in this country. A queer person of fucking color in this country. I am constantly dealing with the hardships of living in this country. I never get a break. And when I hold a drink, I want white liberals to understand, hey, don't fucking talk about the election. You're wasting my goddamn alcohol. And you know who wouldn't waste my alcohol? Ernie. He wouldn't waste a drop of it. He'll see me having a good time and he goes, you know what? I want to make sure he keeps having a good time because he's already had a hard enough time. That's what needs to keep happening. These sad-ass clown white liberals like fucking Bert. <laughs> Making problems out of nothing. Like, did you read what he tweeted? I don't give a shit what he tweeted. I'm gonna wear a safety pin while it's not gonna do shit for nobody. That's the Bert you're dealing with. I want more Ernie's. I want people who write amazing songs in the bathtub. <laughs> I want someone to make me feel good when I'm not feeling good. Bert is a sad clown. Ernie's a happy clown. They fucking fix each other. But they don't fix each other unless Ernie wakes up with his ass with a smile across his goddamn face when he knows shit sucks, but he's still gonna fucking push through with a goddamn little piece of joy he has left in him. So fuck Bert. <laughs> fuck all the Berts. You don't get shit done. You've never gotten shit done because if you did, the country would be fixed already. <laughs> Ernie's make this shit stay together. Ernie's make us wake up in the morning. Ernie's put coffee in our goddamn mouth when we don't want to fucking drink coffee because there's nothing to be awake for. Okay? So fuck America. God bless Bert and Ernie. for both these guys. 
Now it is time to vote. If you're on the side of Burton Will Well, then make it loud right now. If you're on the side of Solomon and Ernie, give it up right now. Ernie is your winner. Give it up for both these guys one more time. All right, next debate's gonna be Kentucky versus Indiana. <laughs> no one's excited for this, okay, cool. All right, yeah, it's like, um, I, I'm really on the side of Kentucky because I like horses running, but other than that, I have no, okay. Let's, <laughs> never mind. All right, let's get the debaters up here, right? Uh, please welcome to the stage, Megan Gailey and Dave Waite. Yeah! Going first. Are you going? Hello. <laughs> All right, on the side of. Are you going first? No, she's going. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, on the side of Indiana, make it up. Uh, make it loud for Megan Gailey. I know you guys aren't excited, and I'm not excited either. Uh, is that a. I hope you. Have you ever seen a defense attorney have to defend a pedophile? <laughs> That's how I feel, but like, yeah, there's one good thing that pedophile probably did once, and then you make an entire case about it. Uh, I'm from Indiana, and Indiana sucks, and I know that, but I love it so much. Uh, look at me. I'm the best person that's ever come from Indiana. Can you imagine growing up in a place where you're the prettiest just based on teeth? Like... And Indiana has some knocks against it, and I understand. Indiana is notoriously racist. Um, I would argue that perhaps that's not true, because I am not racist. Um, I would make a very strong bet that I've had sex with more black men than everyone in here combined. So, <laughs> And the first black person I ever met was NBA Hall of Famer and Indiana Pacer Reggie Miller. <laughs> when I went to his house to trick-or-treat and he gave out king-size Snickers. There is no better way to fight racism than to have white children go to black NBA stars' homes for Halloween. I won my first varsity tennis match at a high school in southern Indiana that is famous for having a former KKK leader buried beneath the high school football stadium. And I beat this fucking bitch. <laughs> and when we went to have our ladies handshake, I said, you racist piece of shit. <laughs> Once, when our high school was playing their high school and we had to have a police escort in and out of town because we had too many black people on our team, we burned a Confederate flag. <laughs> So while, yes, there is a racist part, there's also, like, a really fun, mean part of Indiana <laughs> that says, fuck you, racist. Indiana is also, you're going to find this very, very hard to believe, a hub of the education system. <laughs> Indiana joined the union in 1816 and had the very first publicly funded school system of any state ever. We created the school, you know, it's sort of sad that we've, we've lost our own battle, but we invented it. We have very good public universities, Indiana University, that's where Mark Cuban went. He's amazing on Shark Tank. Uh, also, John Mellencamp went, went there. I definitely got fingered for the first time to a lot of his music. Um, <laughs> Notre Dame, Rudy. I know, I don't like it either, but I'm trying to win! I went to Purdue University, one of the finest educational institutions in all the land, home of Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon, every other fucking astronaut, Orville Redenbacher, a man named Dick the Bruiser. Where would we be without the moon and popcorn and a guy whose name has Dick and Bruiser in it? 
Indiana is also home to the world's largest RV manufacturing. <laughs> I don't know why they feel it's necessary to say world's largest, but it's also home to the world's largest RV dealership, which is called Tom Raper. <laughs> and that's what's sweet about Indiana. <laughs> A place where even Raper is an allowed name to have for a business. <laughs> and yes, I will give you that we are the home of Jared Fogle and Gary and Mike Pence, but you gotta give us some credit. When we go bad, we go fucking big, you know? <laughs> that is all I have for right now. Hey, nice book report. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, you're the best thing to come out of Indiana. You know, you're beautiful, you know, and then that's. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you can't even... I, well, I was just trying to throw a drunk white woman off her game. Uh, you smell like a box of wine. Did you know that? Anyways, I... I guess I'm here to... I, if you read our instant messages between me and Megan, I, we really didn't know what the fuck we're... She seemed... Anyways, I... I guess I'm here to defend or disparage Kentucky or uh, Indiana. Uh... Kentucky is a commonwealth, so I think automatically that it's not even a state, so I should win right there, hands down. There's, there's only four commonwealths in the union, and they're all shitty states, and Kentucky's one of those. I thought there was going to be a podium. That's why I didn't memorize. Maybe like a music stand next time or something. I... Sure, Kentucky is, you know, we are sorry that we unleashed the uh, Cyrus clan on you, Billy Ray and My Miley. Achy, I'm achy breaky, sorry about that. I wrote that in a notebook. I, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You, you, John Mellencamp, you mean, he's from Indiana, right? Hey, he's the worst. <laughs> Sucking on a chili dog? Who does that? Besides the filthy whore, Megan Gailey. Uh. <laughs> Kentucky. Kentucky's one of the home, home of one of the best writers from the 20th century, Hunter S. Thompson. Who's Indiana got, right? They got Kurt Vonnegut Jr., right? Uh, cat, cat's cradle, these nuts. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> Kentucky home, home of one of the best boxers, the greatest boxer of all time, Muhammad Ali, right? <laughs> Who's the best boxer from Indiana? Joe Jackson, the <laughs> dad of Michael Jackson. <laughs> Indiana's so racist, they made Michael Jackson turn white. <laughs> Indiana's so racist, their best basketball player is a white guy, Larry Bird, which is also the most white name ever, besides Megan Gailey. <laughs> Fort Wayne, if you didn't know, was named the dumbest city in America, which seems impossible because there's cities in Mississippi. And that place is terrible. It's the fucking worst. That's all I have for this round. Uh, Dave Wait. On the side of Indiana, Megan Gailey. Uh, that really turned personal. Uh... <laughs> Typical of a person from Kentucky to ridicule someone for being educated and prepared. Uh, I think a 
of Indiana as a land of opportunity. Um, think. He's texting over there. <laughs> Listen, sir, um, I am used to men showing me disrespect, and I will proceed with all of my bullshit anyways. Um, <laughs> This is the first time he's read anything, so... (laughs) I think of Indiana as a land of opportunity. Uh, In Indiana, you can grow up and believe that gay people can be electrocuted straight (laughs) and then become governor. (laughs) How insane is that? If that's not the American dream to be mentally ill and then hold the highest ranking office in your state, I don't know what is. Uh, Indiana is also... There's a cricket. (laughs) It sounds like an Indiana summer night. Um, We also have actual sports teams, like real ones where people get paid and not illegally to be on the team. Uh, Kentucky has Kentucky basketball. Indiana is known for basketball. The one thing they're good at, they're not even the best at. That's our fucking college basketball that they stole. We have the Pacers, the Colts. There's something called the Indy Fuel where men get played to pay soccer. That's cool. I'm so mad at Dave right now. Do you see how I just had to sit there like a fucking news anchor? Like I was happy about what was happening while he called me a whore after I stood up here and said I fucked hundreds of black men? Like, you're going to come for me after I came for myself better than you? What a Kentucky fucking idiot piece of shit thing to do. Megan Gailey. You ready, Dave? <laughs> Dave Wayne, the side of Kentucky. Oh, man, I feel like I just got dumped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I want to go forward. Uh, <laughs> She was trying to be my friend in the back, and I knew it was bullshit. (laughs) I didn't trust it. Sure, Indiana isn't a great place, but Kentucky, what a shithole. (laughs) They They call it the bluegrass state, right? The grass is fucking green. We're morons. We're a bunch of fucking slack jaw hillbillies. It's the home of the Creationist Museum, if you don't know. That's a mecca of stupid, where other stupid people from all over America, most likely Indiana, come to Kentucky to see a museum where there's displays of people riding on dinosaurs because some dirt people wrote it in a book 2,000 years ago. And the state of Kentucky gave them a tax break because they're assholes. Turn the page. <laughs> what is Kentucky giving people? Does anybody know? Yes. That is a thing I didn't write down. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> We've given you fried chicken, coal, and bourbon. We export destruction on the world. All over the world. Coal fucking is destroying our planet. Bourbon has probably wrecked countless marriages. And your aunt is probably going to die because she ate too much chicken. I don't know. I just That was off the top of my head, I guess. I mean, Kentucky is so shitty that I always just say I'm from Cincinnati. Like, that's a better thing. People are like, yeah, all right. The next page is just goals for 2017. (laughs) 
You know, in your head, you think five minutes is a lot longer. <laughs> this is just like somebody from Kentucky, just a fucking whiff. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, to be better at debating. And <laughs> that's probably one of my goals. Huh? Oh, the Louisville Slugger. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> it's probably also broken up a lot of marriages as well. <laughs> I mean, y'all had David Letterman. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. We got George Clooney, right? Yeah, I can name all this. Li- I, whatever, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to, what if I just ran out the clock like I acted like I did really well, like in a football game, like, I'm just going to run this one out, everybody. <laughs> going to take a knee for the last minute. <laughs> got this thing covered <laughs> well I'd just like to apologize to you Megan I, <laughs> when you were in the green room you were like we'll always be friends and I was like well let me test that you know <laughs> Dave White everyone get up for both these performers We should still vote, right? <laughs> if you're on the side of Dave Wayne, Kentucky, make it loud right now. Yeah. All right, if you're on the side of Megan Gailey in Indiana, uh, please applaud right now. Megan Gailey is your winner. Get up for both these guys. All right. <laughs> 